In this video, we are going to graph the parent graph of the tangent function. We will discuss how to read the graph to come up with the standard equation, and we will also discuss how to use the standard equation to come up with the graph. We begin with what we already know. Recall the unit circle. Here we have angles and terminal points in the form x comma y, and we know that tangent of theta takes on the value y over x. So we will use these concepts to come up with our graph. I will be using our quadrantal angles, which are the angles with terminal points along the x and y axis. We will also be using our 45 degree angles, which are the angles that are 45 degrees from the x and y axis. Let's write a few values for tangent. So let's start with zero. Tangent of zero is going to be your y value over your x value. So zero over one is just zero. Tangent of pi over four is going to be root two over two divided by root two over two. Anything over itself is one. So tangent of pi over four is one. Tangent of pi over two is one over zero. Anything over zero is undefined. So we say tangent of pi over two is undefined. Tangent of three pi over four is going to be root two over two divided by a negative root two over two. So that's going to be tangent of three pi over four is going to be equal to negative one. How about we do one in the negative direction? So if I start from zero and we go into the negative direction, although this angle says seven pi over four, 7 pi over 4 is true if we go in the positive direction. However, if we start from 0 and go into the negative direction, this angle becomes negative pi over 4. So tangent of negative pi over 4 is going to be negative root 2 over 2 divided by a positive root 2 over 2, which is a negative 1. That's enough for now to plot our graph. So let's put some points here on the graph. So I'm going to draw a graph. And I'm just going to put these angles on the graph starting from zero. So we have zero and then our first angle is pi over four. And then we have pi over two, then three pi over four. And then we have negative pi over four. So I'm gonna come into the negative direction and put negative pi over four. And here we have one and negative one. So at zero, Tangent of zero is zero. So I'm going to put a dot at zero, zero. Tangent of pi over four is one. So at pi over four, I'm going to put a dot at one. Tangent of pi over two is undefined. So I'm going to put a vertical asymptote at pi over two. Tangent of three pi over four is negative one. So at three pi over four, we'll put a dot at negative one. Let's add another one to the graph. So after three pi over four comes pi. So tangent of pi is going to be zero over negative one which is zero. So I'll add pi. So we have pi and I'm going to put a dot at zero. I think we need to come over one more. 
So let's come here. Tangent of 5 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2 divided by negative root 2 over 2. The negatives cancel, so it becomes a positive 1. So tangent of 5 pi over 4 is equal to a positive 1. So I'm going to go ahead and put 5 pi over 4. And it's a positive 1 here. And yeah, let's do one more. Okay, tangent of 3 pi over 2. will be negative one divided by zero, which is undefined. So we have undefined. And I'm gonna add it here. So at three pi over two, we have another vertical asymptote. And now let's look at the one in the negative direction. Tangent of negative pi over 4 is negative 1. So I'm going to come to negative pi over 4 and put a dot at negative 1. And let's do 1 at negative pi over 2. Okay, so tangent of negative pi over 2. Where's negative pi over 2? Again, if we start at 0, this becomes negative pi over 4. And here we have negative pi over 2. Although it's 3 pi over 2, that is true when you're going this way, okay? So if you're going into the negative direction, this angle now becomes negative pi over 2. So tangent of negative pi over 2 is going to be negative 1 over 0, which is undefined. So we're going to put another vertical asymptote here. Now let's just connect the dots, okay? So it's going to look like this. Just like that. And here the same. Just like that. Now once you understand the shape of the parent graph of tangent, it is not necessary to write so many points. All we need to use is the quadrantal angles. So I'm going to re-graph this only using quadrantal angles. So we have pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. And here we have negative pi over 2. And we have a vertical asymptote at pi over 2, negative pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. And the graph is just going to swing out like this. And here we have the graph of y is equal to tangent of x. Now let us gather some information from our graph. We see that the range of the tangent function is from negative infinity to positive infinity. This means that we have no max values and no min values, thus there is no amplitude like sine and cosine has an amplitude. So I'm going to say no max, no min, thus no amp. Also, let us observe that the graph alternates between asymptotes and intercepts. Next, let us discuss the cycle. The cycle is one complete period. After the graph completes one cycle, it repeats itself forever and ever to the right and to the left. From one asymptote to the next, you have one cycle. 
So we say that the cycle is from negative pi over two to pi over two. But we're not actually including negative pi over two and we're not actually including pi over two. Now let us discuss the period. The period is the length of one cycle. So from negative pi over two to pi over two, it's a length of pi. So the period is equal to pi. In our example, we graph the function over two periods. Next, let us discuss the phase shift. The phase shift, also known as the horizontal shift, tells us whether the graph will shift to the right or to the left. When looking at our graph, although that the cycle begins at negative pi over two, you want to look at the first intercept. The first intercept is at zero. So we say that the phase shift is zero. Next, we discuss the vertical shift. The vertical shift determines whether the graph will shift up or down. Again, looking at this graph, but this time looking at it up and down, we also locate the intercept. We see that the intercept is at zero. So we say that the vertical shift is zero. The x scale is the increment value that goes along the x axis. If we look at this graph here, we are alternating between asymptotes and intercepts. From the asymptote to the intercept is a distance of pi over two. And from this intercept to the next asymptote, it's a distance of pi over two. And so on, it's a distance of pi over two to the next intercept and a distance of pi over two to the next asymptote. So we say that our x scale is an increment value of pi over two. Now, if you want to be more precise and calculate the midpoints in between the intercepts and the asymptotes, then you can simply use the x scale of pi over four. So if you're using pi over four, it will go from asymptote to lower midpoint, to intercept, to upper midpoint, to asymptote, and so on. Now let us discuss the standard equation of the tangent function. The standard equation is as follows. Y is equal to A tan of B X minus C plus D. And if we were to line up our original tangent function with the standard equation, we would have y is equal to 1 tan of 1 x minus 0 plus 0. Let us discuss each part in detail. The absolute value of a we see is equal to 1. It is known as our vertical stretch slash compress. Now, when does the graph stretch and when does it compress? If the absolute value of A is greater than zero but less than one, then the graph compresses vertically. If the absolute value of A is greater than one, then the graph stretches vertically. If A itself is less than zero, then we will graph the function as if the negative sign did not exist and then at the end, we reflect the x-axis. Now let's look at our b. The absolute value of b is also equal to 1. And this is known as our 
horizontal stretch slash compress. Now, when does the graph stretch horizontally and when does it compress horizontally? If the absolute value of B is greater than zero but less than one, then the graph will stretch horizontally. If the absolute value of B is greater than one, then the graph will compress horizontally. Notice that it is the complete opposite of A. If B itself is less than zero, then you will simply graph the function as if the negative sign did not exist and then reflect the y-axis. Or even easier, you can use the fact that tangent is an odd function. This means you can simply remove the negative sign inside of the function and pull it out and then reflect the x-axis at the end. B is also related to the period by the following formula. Period is equal to pi over the absolute value of b, which is equal to pi over the absolute value of 1, since our b is 1, which is equal to pi. Now let us look at c. c is known as our phase shift. So we see that c is equal to 0 in our case, and the phase shift is zero. D is known as our vertical shift. So we see that D is equal to zero and it is known as our vertical shift. Now how can we find the cycle given the standard equation? You can find the cycle using the following formula. Cycle will be from C minus the period divided by two. And so it will begin at C minus the period divided by two, and it will end at C plus the period divided by two. So if we fill in the information, we have C, which is zero, minus the period, which is pi, divided by two. So that's going to be negative pi over two. And C plus the period divided by two, that'll be zero plus pi divided by two, which will be pi over two. And you see it matches here with our cycle. And it makes sense because our C is zero and it begins at zero minus pi over 2, and it ends at 0 plus pi over 2 to complete one cycle. Next, we discuss the x scale. There are two ways to find the x scale. You can either divide the period by 4 or you can divide it by 2. If you divide the period by 4, you will be calculating the increment values from asymptote to lower midpoint and from lower midpoint to intercept and from intercept to upper midpoint, and from upper midpoint to asymptote, and so on. However, if you divide the period by two, you will only be calculating the increment value from the asymptotes to the intercepts. I prefer to divide the period by two and find the midpoints later if necessary. So I'm going to say that the X scale is going to be period divided by 2, which is equal to pi divided by 2. Now I will show you how to find the midpoints towards the end since we are dividing the period by 2. Now if you were given a standard equation and you don't have any information about the graph, you will always begin your graph at C and then add increments of the x scale. So when you begin at C, you are beginning at the intercept. And then you will have to 
add and subtract increments of the x scale to find your asymptotes on either side of the intercept. So we begin at C. Our C is zero. And now we're going to add increments of our x scale to find where our values are on the graph. So at zero, we say that this is an intercept. I'm going to put an I for intercept. And now I'm going to add an increment of pi over two. So zero plus pi over two is equal to pi over two. I'm going to emphasize that the next one over is an asymptote. So I'm going to put an A here for asymptote. Now come and add another increment. Pi over two plus another pi over two is equal to two pi over two. We will reduce at the end. Do it again. Two pi over two plus another pi over two is equal to three pi over two. And I will emphasize that the next one over from here is an intercept. So I'll put I for intercept. And I'll go ahead and reduce. So here we have pi. And then, so again, we're alternating. Intercept, asymptote, intercept, and the next one is asymptote. And now let us subtract a value. So starting from zero and subtracting pi over two, we have zero minus pi over two is equal to negative pi over two. And again, it's an asymptote because it alternates from your intercept. So if you come here and you look on the graph, it lines up. So you have zero, which is C, that's where it begins. And if I add an increment of pi over two, it becomes an asymptote, and here's your pi over two here. And then you come over again, and you have pi, and it's an intercept. So here is pi with an intercept. And then you come over again, and you have an asymptote, and sure enough, you have an asymptote. Similarly, when beginning at C and subtracting an x scale of pi over two, then you are getting the asymptote to the left of C. Now, how about those midpoints that we talked about earlier? Well, to find the midpoint, you can simply take the x value of your asymptote and add it to the x value of your intercept Divide it by two, and that will be the x placement on the graph. So negative pi over two plus zero divided by two is negative pi over four. Sure enough, negative pi over four lines up with your midpoint. Similarly, you can take your x value of your intercept and add it to the x value of your asymptote to the right of it, divide it by two, and that will be your x placement for the next midpoint. So zero plus pi over two divided by two is pi over four. Sure enough, pi over four lines up with your midpoint. Now to find the height of the upper midpoint, you will simply take the value of d plus the absolute value of a. So for the upper midpoint, d is zero plus the absolute value of a, which is one. Similarly, for the lower midpoint, you'll simply take D minus the absolute value of A. D is zero, and minus the absolute value of A is negative one. And that is how you find the midpoints. I would also like to add that if you were given a graph and you need to find a standard equation and you need to find B, you can use this relationship here. Period is equal to pi over B. So period is equal to pi over b and just solve for b. b is equal to pi over period. And we know our period here, which is pi. So we have pi over pi, which is one. So b is one. So let me recap everything. We started with the unit circle and we came up with a graph. From the graph, we were able to read it to come up with information. And with this information, we can obtain a standard equation. Similarly, if you were just given a standard equation, you should be able to 
come up with a graph. If you look here and compare, you can see that everything lines up. So we see that our period is pi when reading it from a standard equation. We see that our period is pi when reading it from a graph. We see that our cycle is from negative pi over two to pi over two when reading it from a standard equation. And we see that our cycle is from negative pi over two to pi over two when reading it from a graph. We see that our x scale is pi over two when reading it from a standard equation. And we see that our x scale is pi over two here. We see our increment values that will go along the x axis when reading it from a standard equation and reading it from a graph, they line up. Also, our phase shift is zero and our vertical shift is zero here. Our phase shift is zero and our vertical shift is zero here. So you see, no matter what information you have, you should be able to relate them. And that is all for the parent graph and the standard equation of the tangent function. Thank you for watching and always remember that you are awesome.